Hello, what's up YouTube? Ronnie it's with another tutorial and in this tutorial I'll show you guys how you can add shape or dimension to your images after doing skin retouching. I know oftentimes when we do frequency separation, it tends to create a flat image and we lose out on the nice contouring or shape or dimension that is embedded in the original image. So in this tutorial, I'll show you guys a technique in which we can use to add some shape or dimension or a 3D kind of look to the image so the image doesn't look flat and a little bit boring then that technique is also going to be adding shine or glow to our images so you know we tend to retouch images and they tend to have that kind of roughness added onto them so this technique is going to be adding shape or dimension to the photo and also adding shine or a glow to the skin after we have done the skin retouching so let me just give you guys a moment to hit the like button on this video so that youtube can recommend it to more people out there and we grow the channel in general hoping you're done hitting the like button let's go and learn this wonderful technique in photoshop so a version of photoshop i'm using i'm using photoshop 2020 and we're just going to come to the adjustments and we come to the curves adjustment layers so after creating these curves adjustment layers so turn off the caps lock if at all your caps lock is on so just turn it off so after doing that we are we have created the curves adjustment layer and we have not added any adjustment to it so in order to do this what we're going to do we're just going to come to select right here and I'm just going to come down to where it says color range. So when it comes to color range, always make sure that your sample size is 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 average. So make sure the eyedropper tool is selected and you change the sample size to 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 because we want it to be a precise selection in the areas we want to dodge or burn or in the area as well we want to add that kind of glow onto the image so so it go, it is going to open for you this window right now and you have to make sure you select sample sampled layers and you also come to this option and make sure selection is active and where it says selection preview make sure quick mask is also selected so in this case we just want to target the highlights in the image so in order to target the highlights, just I'm just going to turn the fuzziness all the way down. In order to target the highlights of the image, I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool and I look for the area that has highlights in this image. And just click on that area that has highlights. So just click. I'm just going to look for an area. So when I click on this area and I start turning up the fuzziness a little bit to around, let's go with 60. So every single time I click on the highlights, you can notice that the highlighted area is shown in this black and white canvas right here. And the selected area is going to be containing the white. So you can see every area we want to target has white in this image. So if at all I click on the shadow, you can see it creates an inverse of the selection. So we just want to select the highlights. So I'm just going to come and I click on the highlights just like that so right now we have targeted the highlights so after doing that just come and hit ok so since we have targeted the highlights in this image it means that we are just going to be adding a glow to the highlights in general so just make a midpoint right here in the middle click in the middle and just brighten up just like that so if i take this all the way up you can see that it has over brightened uh, the highlights so i'm just going to reset i'm just going to reset and just brighten slightly don't overdo it just do it like a minimal adjustment so i think like that and i'm just going to come here to the curves and i'm just going to rename that to dodge and i'm going to do the same for the shadows in this image so come back to the curves adjustment layers and after clicking on it, come to select and I'm going to come back to color range. And make sure I have the eyedropper tool selected and just click into the shadows of the image. And when I click on those shadows, you are, not, you are going to notice that 
it has selected the white areas or the white area is the target area so you can see this white area is the shadow area that we are targeting in this image and we're just going to come and hit okay just like that and now we're going to make a midpoint and this time around do, do the opposite which is darkening so when you're darkening you just click in the middle and drag down just like that to a darken just so just don't overdo it so close this and you're going to double click right here and we're going to name that burn so let's see the before and after for the burning this is the before and after before after you can see it has added shape or dimension to the shadows and the face of the model is really having that shape or dimension added onto it and let's see what we did for the dodging this is the before and after before after it has really added shine or glow into the skin of the model you can see how nice and beautiful this technique has been to this image so remember as you're doing this it tends to distort or change the original colors embedded into the image so we're just going to change the blend mode from normal and change it to luminosity for the dodge and click on the burn layer and you're going to change that to to luminosity so that it doesn't affect the original colors in the image and when you feel like maybe the dodging and burning is too much for your liking you can just come and reduce on the opacity of a given either dodge or burn layer so i'm just going to leave everything at 100 percent for purposes of this tutorial i'm just going to select both layers right here and put them in a group by hitting ctrl or command g on the keyboard and you can name this to dodge and burn just like that so let's see the overall before and after for the dodging and burning and if at all it has added shape or dimension into the image or if at all it has added that nice shine or glow into this portrait so let's see this is the before of the image and this is the after before after before after i hope you can see the difference right here so basically this is how to easily add glow or shine to your portraits and also add shape or dimension to the image so that they don't look flat after doing skin retouching and if at all you have learned something from this tutorial don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching from this channel for the very first time Ronix from Ronix Photography thank you for watching I'll see you in yet more tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating